Right, I am going to carry on reading. This is part 13 of My Friend Walter by the fabulous Michael Murpurgo. Okay, hope you're enjoying it. I like to pretend that I'm reading it to you in the classroom. Will made as if to follow me into my room, but Mother wouldn't let him. You can talk in the morning, she said. Bess is tired out, and anyway, the removal lorry will be here at seven o'clock. We've all got to be up early. Off to bed now. And Will obey obeyed, a bit too easily, I thought. My room was not my room anymore. All my owls had been packed away. There were no curtains at the windows, no pictures on the walls. Elephant was nowhere to be seen. There was a packing case where my chair had been, and screwed up newspaper was scattered around all over the floor. I shut the door and coughed. My friend Walter was sitting propped up against the pillows on my bed, his legs crossed at the ankles. He was smiling triumphantly. He knew I was here, he said. That cur of yours sniffed me out head to toe and had I had nothing to offer him except this. And he threw back his cloak. The golden orb lay on his lap, shining and glittering in the light of my bedside lamp. I had guessed right, so it was no real surprise to me. But all the same, I could not take my eyes off it. He held it out to me. It's yours, chick. Come take it. It will not bite you. It was a perfect globe of gold encircled with bands of pearls and diamonds and rubies and sapphires and emeralds and many more stones that I could not recognise. At the top of it was a small jewel-encrusted cross. I was about to touch it when I pulled back. You stole it, didn't you? I said, you stole it from the tower. It was on the radio. They're looking for it everywhere. You shouldn't have. I am no thief, cousin, Walter protested, his voice rising with indignation. Is it stealing to take what is mine? Did I not tell you how I was robbed of everything that was rightly mine? My lands, my castles, my jewels? He held up the golden orb in one hand. This bauble is but a trifle of what I am owed. This is due to my family, to you. You are of my blood, and therefore it is yours by right. Take it. I have only taken back what is ours, and ours it shall remain. I tell you, cousin, I had more jewels on one of my shoes than there are in this trinket. Take it, for with it you can restore your family's fortune. But it belongs to the Queen. It belongs to you, Bess, he said, smiling. And if you will not take it, then you must catch it. And with that, he tossed it to me. I had no time to think about dropping it. Which was just as well, because otherwise, I would most certainly have done so. I can't catch it to save my life. It was heavier than I expected, a lot heavier. Suddenly, the door behind me opened. I swung round, the golden orb in my hands. My brother Will was standing there, his mouth, mouth gaping. Cripes! Chapter 8 You! Will said. It was you! You stole it! You really stole it! No, I didn't, I said. He ignored me. But how? How did you do it? I told you I didn't do it. How could I? Close the door, Will. Or they'll hear us. I don't mind if they hear us. He could not take his eyes off the orb. What did you do it for? I never did it, I whispered. Honest, I didn't. Then how come you're standing there holding it if you never took it? He reached out and touched it. Is that really it? He asked. Is that really the one? I suppose so, I said. Well, somebody stole it, didn't they? I had nothing to say. I mean it. Didn't get here on its own, did it? Did it, Bess? So if you didn't steal it, who did? I can't tell you, I said. Not yet. And even if I could, you wouldn't believe me. You'd just say I was making it all up. Will looked at me for a moment, and then suddenly he leaned forward and grabbed the orb out of my hands. If you won't tell me right now what's going on, he said, I'll take this next door and show them. I will, Bess. Honest, I will. There's been things going on around here that I don't understand, and you're going to tell me. For instance, 
I don't know how that letter and that bottle I found just disappeared. You said you'd tell me one day and you still haven't. One minute they were there and the next minute they weren't. And that's not natural. Then you go running off to London for no good reason. And now this. Something's going on and I want to know what it is. Now, are you going to tell me or not? I would if I could, I said. But I promised. Promised who? A friend of mine. What friend? I shook my head. Right then. And he turned away from me. Suddenly the door shut in front of him and Sir Walter Raleigh was standing there, his cane levelled at Will's chest. There was no doubt that Will could see him. You only had to see the look on Will's face. Prithee thee, Master Will, no further. Will backed away towards me. Who is it? His voice was barely audible. Who's that man? Cousin Bess, will you not present me to your brother? And make haste to take that bauble from him, for I fear he may drop it. I took the orb from Will's trembling hands. This is Sir Walter Raleigh, I said. He's the friend I was telling you about. He's one of our ancestors, remember? Will was swallowing hard. It's all right, I said. He won't hurt. Honest he won't. But he's dead, said Will, pushing me forward and holding me like a shield between himself and my friend Walter. He's in the history books, he whispered. He's dead. He's been dead for ages. Three hundred and seventy years this very year, said Walter, lowering his cane and smiling broadly. Be not afeard of me, Master Will, I bear you no ill will. I come to help you, not to harm you. Then he's a ghost, said Will. He's a real live ghost. Real, but unfortunately not live, cousin, said Walter. I am, as you say, a spirit being, visible only to those I wish to see me. Until now, only your sister has seen me, and I had promised never to show myself to anyone else. Walter looked at me and shrugged his shoulders. I had no choice, Chick. You understand that, do you not? I had to stop your impetuous brother. I could not allow my plan to be discovered. It would have been the end of it. Shall I tell him all, dear cousin? I nodded. Your sister Bess brought me here from the tower many long weeks ago, and I lived among you at all that time, though you did not know it. I know you all better than you can imagine, Master Will. You are indeed my family, and I have come to love you as such. The letter, Will whispered, his hands gripping my shoulders so hard it hurt. It was him that wrote it then, wasn't it? He's W.R. He's Walter Raleigh. Aye, that I did, cousin, Walter said, and most carelessly left it lying on the table for you to find it. You did not dream it, Master Will. It was that I that took away the letter and hid it whilst you were outside the door. And the bottle, Will asked. That was the elixir, I said. The what? Will. The medicine, I explained. Walter made it down in your chemistry lab, in the cellar. I told you it wasn't me messing about down there, didn't I? It was Walter. He saved her life, Will. He gave me the elixir in the bottle and I gave it to Granny in her tea. Then you were the old man she saw in her dreams, said Will. But it wasn't in her dreams at all, was it? And it was you that stole the crown jewel. You brought it down with you. Is an under my cloak, I said. Anything <clears throat> anything he hides under his cloak, you can't see. He hit me twice, didn't you, Walter? I felt Will's grip on my shoulder loosen somewhat. He brought it back with him on the train, but I didn't know that and I didn't know anything about it, not then. But why? said Will. What for? For us, I said. Walter did it for us. See, he knows all about the farm all about us being kicked out and having nowhere to go. I would not have you suffer as I once did, said Walter. I would not allow history to repeat itself. I see I must explain more. They took all that was mine, Master Will, 
when they called me traitor and condemned me. God, it breaks my brain when I think of it even now. I was betrayed by making by my own king. <clears throat> I had thought better of you, cousin. Do you dare to teach me... At worse, I was betrayed by those I thought were my friends. I would be avenged for the wrong they did me, and the wrong that has been done to you. I was no traitor, Master Will. So you see, I have restored to my family only a small part of what is owed to us. They have baubles and trinkets aplenty in the tower. They will not miss it. Faith, it is ours by right, Master Will. Why, the very gold and jewels you see before you might have come from the Spanish treasure ship I myself captured. It was mine, I tell you, before it was ever the crown's, and was most wickedly taken from me. You have but to sell it, and my honour and our family's fortune is restored for ever. I told him already it was too late, I said, that we've got to leave tomorrow. There are other farms, said Walter, and perchance we may find yet find a better one. You can't sell it, said Will, coming out from behind me at last. That's what I told him, I said. It's not right. It belongs to the Queen. I don't mean that, said Will. What I mean is, no one would buy it, would they? I mean, it's like Father said. Everyone knows what it looks like, don't they? Everyone will be on the lookout for it. You can hardly just walk into a jeweller's in Exeter and say, Oh, what will you give me for this? And then plonk it down on the counter. And then he thought for a moment. But come to think of it, I suppose you could pick it out of the pick out the jewels and melt down the gold. <gasps> you can't, I said. You wouldn't. I was horrified at the thought of destroying something so beautiful. Oh, let's soon make another one. Just think, Bess. Only got to sell it, and we could have a farm. We any farm we wanted. And he shook his head. It's no good. We still couldn't sell the gold, and even if it was just a lump, nor the jewels. I mean, just supposing I tried. They'd still wonder where I got it from, wouldn't they? No, oh, it wouldn't work. He's right, Walter, I said, and I held out the orb for Walter. He folded his arms resolutely. You've got to take it. You must, I said, a sudden panic rising inside me. How are we going to explain if they find it here? We'll all go to prison. Mother, father, everyone. You shouldn't have done it, Walter. It's not right to steal things. Just because someone else stole from you first doesn't make it right to steal it back. Walter looked down at me and his face darkened with anger. I had thought better of you, cousin. Do you dare to teach me right from wrong? I who have lived through a lifetime and a hundreds, hundreds of years to ponder on it? I who have shaped the history of the world? Have you so little faith in me? All I have done, I have done for you. And you pay me thus with insults? My honour is all that I have left, and now you would steal even that from me and call me a thief? I see you love me not, cousin. Will hid behind me again as the onslaught continued, but the anger turned suddenly to hurt. In your service, cousin Bess, I have endeavoured much and accomplished little, it is true. But to spurn me so is not generous. I didn't mean it like that, I said, and I'll carry on a bit later.